Remember how INAV required magnetometer aka compass to have all the navigation features enabled? Because I do. And guess what? Until today, I thought that this is the requirement. But apparently, since INAV 7.1, the compass is only an optional accessory. One of the last arguments that keeps you hanging with Betaflight just became invalid. Anyhow, how does it work? In the technical terms, INAV 7.1 is able to run the sensor fusion on the course over ground provided by the GPS module and the gyroscope and the accelerometer. As the result, after obtaining the initial heading, it is more than capable to track where the north is and in which direction the front of the quad is pointing without the use of magnetometer. Yes, long term. That means the heading can drift over time, but we are talking rather about minutes than seconds. And guess what? During that time frame, every single INA flight mode that previously required the magnetometer is fully functional. Every single one. Cruise, return to home, position, you name it. Everything works just fine. How does it look like in flight? Let me show you. In this DVR, you see a normal flight with magnetometer present and enabled. Close to the direction to home arrow, you see two markers. Marker number one is actual heading obtained from the magnetometer and marker number two is the course over ground obtained from the GPS. As you can see, during the flight, those two numbers are close together, but they more or less align in which direction the UAV actually points. And pay attention that both values are available from power up. Now, let's take a look at the flight where the magnetometer was disabled and the magnetometer data was not available for INAV to compute the current heading. As you can see, directly after arming, both values are not available. But as soon as I fly a few meters forward, and basically this is like 20, maybe 30 meters of the straight flight, we have readings. The right one is the course over ground directly returned by the GPS module, but the left one is the heading computed based on the initial course over ground and sensor fusion with the accelerometer and gyroscope data. And, although it's not perfect, you can see that it's more or less tracking. And now, when I flip the switch and start the return to home procedure, it just goes home and lands perfectly on the spot. And exactly the same is possible when I activate the position hold. It just holds the position just like it would if it had the magnetometer available. But it doesn't, and it still works. And by the way, why don't you subscribe to the FPV Union? University newsletter. Every month into your mail inbox you will get a newsletter with the RC and FPV related news and other information that I find interesting. The link is in the description. There are however some cavetas connected with the magless navigation. First of all for INAV 7.1, although it's available, it's still treated as the experimental feature. That means you cannot just connect everything besides magnetometer, configure modes and fly. We still do not allow to set up GPS related modes in the configurator if magnetometer is not one of the available sensors. So to be able to use magless navigation with INAV 7.1, you still need magnetometer for the initial setup. Later, you can just disable it and it will work. But for the setup and for the configuration of those modes, well, it's just still required. Bear in mind, it will change relatively soon, but not for INAV 7.1, unfortunately. Second of all, you cannot just take off and activate position hold or any other GPS related flight mode immediately after takeoff. You have to fly preferably straight forward for as long as INAF requires to be able to run the successful sensor fusion of the course over ground and current gyroscope and accelerometer data. But this is only a few seconds of the preferably forward flight and then it's just working. Third of all, it requires relatively queen and 
not very noisy setup. The more noise will be fed into the gyroscope and accelerometer, well, the less precise the magless navigation will be, because now the accelerometer and the gyroscope data are essential not only to keep the drone flying, but also to track the current heading. So on the flying vibrators it just will not rather work. But shoot on any other half decent setups. How cool is that? One of the last obstacles that was keeping you from adopting iNav is finally gone. And by the way, I'm not the author of this code. It was brought to you by the same guy who introduced VTOLS to iNav. Thanks Shota and thanks everyone else who helped to develop and test this feature. Amazing job! In the meantime, here's the next video you should watch. This was the FPV University. I'm Paweł Spychalski. Thank you very much for watching and like always, happy flying! Happy flying without magnetometer, guys!